Wooden Railway Edward Presents Engines and Escapades Episode 4 Edward and the Exhibit Edward is one of Sir Topham Hatt's oldest engines, though he is still one of the most reliable. Sir Topham Hatt is very proud of Edward and still chooses to give him many important jobs. He's a mixed traffic engine and can pull both trucks and coaches just as well as some other newer engines. Edward was sitting in the yard one morning, dozing happily, since he had shunted all of the trucks. He was awakened by Sir Topham Hatt's booming voice. Please excuse my startling intrusion, Edward, said Sir Topham Hatt, but I have some urgent news. I'm sure you've heard about the new museum opening up at Great Waterton, but one of the exhibits has arrived late, and I'm giving you the job of delivering it to the museum. And remember, the grand opening is set to commence at 6 o'clock sharp, so try to be on time. You can pick it up at the docks. After Edward had agreed, Sir Topham Hatt left. Edward was excited. He had needed a vacation from Bill and Ben, and it had been long overdue. Finally, he had gotten the chance. As he departed the yard, he pondered over what the delivery might be. When he got to the docks, he had a pleasant surprise. Salty had already shunted all of Edward's delivery. Thank you, Salty, said Edward, and he backed up to collect the museum cars. He was about to steam out of the docks when Cranky yelled, Watch out down there! One of the packages had slipped from Cranky's hook and was dangerously close to crashing right on Edward's exhibit. It's falling! shouted Cranky even louder. Edward acted fast. With some quick thinking and a strong jerk, Edward pulled out of the way, avoiding the falling menace. The crate smashed onto the track and burst open, right where Edward had been sitting. Edward stopped just in time, and his special delivery was unharmed. Everyone at the docks was surprised by Edward's quick reflexes. Even Cranky exclaimed, Wow, um, that was pretty good for a little mite. This was surprising coming from the always grumpy crane. And though the last bit was questionable, nonetheless, it put a small grin on Edward's face. After eyeing Cranky, Salty put in, Yes, that was a very brave move, Edward. Took a lot of courage. Very reliable, too. Good job, me hearty. Once again, Edward thanked the diesel, and this time Cranky didn't drop yet another piece of cargo. As Edward continued east, he enjoyed the scenery and was humming happily to himself. He started to break as he approached the transfer yard. He knew it was a busy place and didn't want to get into an accident. Soon, though, he would realize he would have to stop much faster. As he rounded the bend, he came to a nasty surprise. Driver, do you see that? We need to stop. Thankfully, Edward was able to stop, but just barely. Percy was up ahead on the turntable. Help, I'm stuck. The turntable is jammed and I'm derailed, Percy pleaded. Percy's right. We've been stuck in these sidings for hours, and I'm behind on my work, exclaimed Oliver. Edward was still out of breath from breaking just before the turntable, but in due time said, <sighs> I'm sorry, I didn't see you there. I would like to help. I, uh, I might be a little late, but that's all right. The only problem is I'm not sure how. Hmm. Edward was deep in thought when it hit him. It's dangerous, he thought to himself, but I must try. Percy, how about I give you a bump so you can get off the turntable and I won't get stuck? There was a chance that Percy would be thrown off the rails, but Percy's wheels were aching as he lay ajar on the turntable. So after a little thought, Percy agreed with a happy sigh. Yes, Edward, let's do it. It's worth a try, peeped Percy. Edward then uncoupled from his train and got ready to bump Percy. Ready? asked Edward. He knew Percy was a little worried, and he felt worried too. Percy gulped. I'm ready as I'll ever be, he responded. Edward took a deep breath and raced forward. He softly bumped Percy. His brakes made a loud screech as he tried not to get stuck himself. His buffers were inches from the turntable. Whew, that was close, panted Edward. As for Percy, he was also lucky and shot forward. He rounded a bend and hit some buffers, but he didn't mind. Thank you, Edward, Percy exulted. Wow, Edward, that was quite a spectacle, praised Oliver. I better go help Percy out of that sighting. I didn't know a museum display could pull another, chuckled Bill. 
Stanley and Oliver glared at him. Oh, yeah, grinned Bill. I, I mean, that was really cool you helped Percy. I agree with Bill, said Stanley. But Edward, you better get going. I heard that the museum is opening very soon, and we better get back to work. Right, Bill? Yes, Sir Stanley, my lord, mocked Bill, and the two tank engines left, both very thankful for Edward's clever plan. Bully, Edward, called Oliver, and thanks again. Edward blushed and thanked the engines for their gratitude. He was content with the praise, but didn't let his ego get too big for his boiler. Edward then came by the Drickers' orchard and found Trevor moving happily between the apple trees. Hello there, Edward. Did you bring children for me to give a ride to? No, Trevor, laughed Edward, but I thought you gave children a ride at the Sodor Fair last week. I did, but that was a week ago. I haven't seen a single child since, sighed Trevor. I've been quite lonely these past few months. Not many engines travel down this line except you, but never mind. How are you doing? Quite all right, actually, answered Edward. I'm pulling these cars to the museum. This is the last exhibit, and it will open. Hmm, that's nice, said Trevor. I've also had my fair share of incidents along the way, continued Edward. I helped Percy off the turntable and saved my delivery from a package that Cranky dropped. Wow, you're getting around today. Yes, indeed I am. It's been nice chatting, Trevor, but I have to get going now. Bye, said Edward, and he left the branch line route. Edward came to the viaduct, which he always seemed to have trouble with. Whoa, they should make these climbs easier. He then heard a cry for help. That sounds like Thomas, but it can't be. He passed this line hours ago. But to Edward's surprise, it was indeed Thomas. Help, I'm stuck, and I'm going to fall any moment, Thomas pleaded. Oh my, exclaimed Edward. Thomas, what happened? I was puffing along when I came across a tree branch that had fallen on the track. I tried to stop, but it was too late, and I ended up like this, recounted Thomas. But please, Edward, try to get me help. I'm starting to slip. Just then, Daisy and Diesel pulled up. What's happened now, Thomas? In a little predicament? Mocked Diesel. Daisy chimed in. If I'm not mistaken, Percy already had one of those. Thomas's face turned redder than James's paint job. But before he could retort, Edward intervened. This is no time for playing around, you two, scolded Edward. You will have to find another route. The two diesels disappeared, but sounded their horns in disgust. <laughs> Thomas, I'll start by taking away Annie and Clarabelle. Edward did as he said and left Thomas's coaches at a switch. He himself moved on to the other line and started explaining his plan to Thomas. In order to make sure we both don't fall, I'll have to try something risky and put you on the rails by coming up on my rails, said Edward. When Thomas agreed, Edward moved into action. As he carefully advanced, Thomas slowly made contact with the rails. All Edward needed to do now was switch onto the other track and pull him to safety. What can I ever do to repay you? asked Thomas. Oh, nothing, silly. I was just doing a favor for a friend, reassured Edward. And they both went off to their destination. As Edward pulled onto museum grounds, he was greeted by many engines and people that had gathered for the opening ceremony. The director of the museum was positioned behind a large podium. While the other engines and crowd were excited for Edward, he was not. He angrily tapped at his watch. Oh, what's the meaning of this? You're ten minutes late, he spluttered. If it's getting to be done, the celebration is ruined. Silly engine, you should have ordered a lorry to take it. Edward was hurt by these words, but the other engines quickly intervened. I heard that he helped Percy off the turntable and rescued the engine stuck in the yard, announced Duck. The diesels told me he saved Thomas from falling off the viaduct, said Boko thoughtfully. And if it wasn't for Edward, your exhibit would have been smashed to bits at the docks, Murdoch explained quietly. The director felt embarrassed. Well, in that case, there's no need to get upset. He's here now with the exhibit, and that's all that matters, he said quickly. Indeed, agreed Sir Topham Hat. I knew I could count on you, Edward. 
you will always be a really reliable engine. Edward knew Sir Topham Hatt was right, and as he got a round of applause from the crowd and a chorus of whistles from his engine friends, all he could do was smile. <laughs> Hello? Who, who's there? Uh, hello? Show yourself. Who's there? Hello? Well, take a souvenir for the journey. Come on now, still lots to do, lots to do. <laughs>